Hey everybody, Conodger here, and welcome back to Automation, the car company tycoon game. Today is episode number three of the Vector Automotive Challenge version two. This time we are going to take our Vectron and make some modified versions of it. But let's go ahead and take a look at it from a stock point of view. You'll remember that this is a low production vehicle that we are trying to make our way into now that we have decided into the North American market and possibly the European market. Not so much the Asian market as we didn't think uh, we had much competition for those guys. So this is what we had and these are the stats that we had. Remember we're using a BMW straight six engine, the M52B28. It produced 200 horsepower was pretty reliable, has a lot of smoothness and responsiveness, and uh, gave us some pretty decent performance stats. We had a 0 to 60 time of 5.7 seconds, a quarter mile of 14.1, and a top speed of 146. This car is extremely light at 2,261 pounds, and we got that through some lightweight polymer body panel materials. Okay, so I think that's enough overview. So the the uh, the way I want to approach this is to take it as if this car has been released and uh, within about six months of a car getting released, especially a sports car, people are going to start wanting to modify them. The first thing that people usually modify with their cars is the engine. So the first car, the first modified version I want to build is the at-home tuner. So we're going to design a car that has some bolt-ons to it and see what kind of easy potential this car had in it. So this is the at-home tuner version. I need to save that before I modify it so I don't overwrite the original because that would be bad. So let's go back to the engine and let's run this test one more time. Uh, just click through it. Okay, we're at 92.3 on Octane, and we are running on 93.1, so there's already a little bit of potential there. Not a whole lot of potential in timing. Already at 95, so yeah, very little potential with that. I'm not going to change things like making it throttle per cylinder and stuff like that. That's not bolt-ons to me. Uh, bolt-ons would be putting a performance intake. Well, we already have a performance intake, so we're not going to do that either. Um, let's see, we have just regular tubular headers on here. We can go for some long tubes. And let's see, we do just have the straight through muffler on there on the second one. That seems pretty much uh, good already as well. Uh, let's see, let me, do we think, is putting cams in a car an at home thing? Uh, it's iffy. It's it's not impossible, and uh, it is something that people would do if they were experienced enough. And it's certainly something that is available out there. So let's say we jump this up 10 in cam profile. Uh, we're not going to mess with bottom end. We're not going to mess with internals, anything like that. That doesn't seem... That's not your in-home mechanic kind of stuff. All right, so that's going to mean uh, our... Our fuel octane is going to be even lower, so we could throw max timing at this thing. And let's see what that gives us for our baseline. I'm looking for, I would say, at least a 20 to 30 horsepower jump. I had some pretty good advice come in from Ty, who is a viewer that is apparently pretty familiar with this engine. So he gave me a nice little list of uh, things he thought would be realistic modifications for it. So that's kind of what I'm basing this off of to some degree, because obviously I do not have a ton of experience with this engine. Actually, I have none experience with it. So uh, I'm kind of relying on some of what he said and just some of the stuff I found throughout the interwebs. And just general feeling. I know, I know generally what kind of modifications you can safely make to an engine. So let's see if we can get that uh, 20, 30 horsepower out of this thing. Alright, so we're already sitting at 225, 
let's say we threw a tune on this thing and gave it a few, maybe a couple hundred more RPM and potential rev band, and we'll see if that ends up having issues or not. Uh, it does. It starts to have bottom end issues. Uh, it did squeak out a little bit more power, but that's something to look forward to in the future, is that there is more potential in the top end of this power band if we can get the bottom end to stay together. Uh, even at 6700? No, 6700, so uh, is okay. So we'll say we threw another 100 RPM at its rev limit. Its reliability is still okay. And 226 horsepower, 204 foot-pounds of torque, so a small increase in torque, but a pretty substantial increase in horsepower. Uh, let's see, I'm going to run through everything once again. Not changing anything there. Cam profile I'm happy with. We're already kind of getting past its peak power band uh, with its rev limit. This all looks good. We're not going to run a race intake on a streetcar. And the exhaust is limited to 230 horsepower. Uh, I don't think it would give us anything to go more than that. Oh, well, it did. Okay, so increasing the exhaust tubing did help. And it will lower the torque though. Let's compare these charts. Uh, it's not bad enough that I'm gonna not do it. I think that little bit of top end power is worth losing that little bit of low end power. I mean you can see the chart is just different in this low 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 RPM band where I guess we're maybe losing a little bit of back pressure uh, losing a little bottom end power but we want to go fast, and we want to go fast in the top end, so uh, it really helped our peak power, so I'm going to keep it. So when it comes down to the chassis of the vehicle, I'm not going to change anything gearbox-wise. That, to me, isn't something your in-home mechanic's going to do. Uh, if he was going to do something, it would be uh, an upgraded clutch, maybe, something like that, which we don't really have the option of doing and isn't going to affect us. But here, we may increase our tires and wheels to a wider option. Let's see what kind of width we could put on this thing. Uh, we can't increase the fronts due to the fenders. Uh, if we get that to show again. I didn't put a whole lot of fender in this car, so we can't really put a whole lot more tire into this car. We can put more rear tire in it. Don't think that's going to help us at all, though. And we're already on sports compound tires, so even that's not really going to be a huge factor. As far as the brakes go, I think the stock brakes were pretty high performance. Uh, this car had a very nice uh, braking performance to begin with, especially with that low weight. So I'm not going to do anything crazy there either. I am going to do something that almost every... Uh, aftermarket tuner seems to do that is a lower the vehicle so we're gonna lower it down to like a 193 so we'll take a centimeter out of this car and usually in that you will add camber to it uh, because the stock arms don't have a whole lot of adjustment in them usually uh, so you get the the positive benefit of having more camber for your performance but the negative benefit of having more camber for your everyday driving Alright, so I'm going to say that's good enough for the at-home tuner edition. Let's save it. Let's see what kind of improvement we get out of this thing. Alright, so as expected, the tameness went down, but the sportiness went up. And prestige went up. Utility actually went up a little bit, which is kind of strange. Um, but let's look at the detailed stats. We have increased its lateral acceleration, decreased the troll angle, and the wheel spin engine is improved, top speed is improved, loudness is improved for sportiness, uh, downforce is improved, which is strange. Oh, possibly because we lowered the vehicle. Aha. All right, so let's go to the test track and see. Zero to 60, we didn't really improve. In quarter mile, we got under the 14 minute barrier, 14 minute barrier, 14 second barrier. So that's nice, 13.98. And uh, one thing I didn't do is I didn't do a baseline track run. Um, bummer. Alrighty, so I went ahead and ran the original car on the track, which I believe... Oh, it's not going to show, is it? Uh, let's see. Will it show? It does, okay. 
So we ran a 130.39 with the stock car. We have now improved that to a 129.82 just with some simple bolt-ons. So, well, simple. I guess throwing cans in there, I don't know, that's, that's debatably simple, but uh, with some aftermarket tuning just in your home garage, we got this thing down to a 129.8. Alrighty, that's well and good, but now let's step this up and let's go to an actual shop tuning environment and uh, let's see what we can really push out of this thing. Alrighty, so now it's time to take it to the shop. It's time to do some serious upgrades to this thing. Take it to your local BMW mechanic and see what they can do. There is a sister engine to this called the S52. That was the high performance of this family. High performance variant, that is. And Ty has given me some specifications that you could do with it. And uh, they bored it out to a 86.4. That is apparently the max bore before you start getting into the uh, the cylinder walls past the the uh, the block. So that's that's the most you can do. And the stroke is 89.6. So quite a bit more stroke in there as well. That brings our capacity up to 3.152 cc. Unfortunately, we're going to gain in the the realm of automation. We're going to gain some weight in this versus in real life, you probably wouldn't uh, because you would be thinning out the block. You'd probably actually potentially even lose weight, but you have to put big, bigger pistons in there anyway, so uh, possibly not. It does have forged internals though, so we can go forged and forged, which is very, very nice. Alrighty, moving on to the top end. We can now increase the compression. We can put some uh, with those forged pistons say that they were higher compression actually let me look up really quick what the compression ratio of the S52 was because I think that would be probably what the pistons from that engine would do to this one so let's see the S52 come on Google don't let me down yes 11.3 to 1 alright I'm gonna take the first source I got 11.3 <laughs> to 1 cam profile was already increased. We have started with the baseline tuned engine, uh, so I'm going to leave that as is for now. Uh, we're not going to add VVT or VVL anything like that. That's a little too crazy. Alright, now this is not a race car, so we're still not going to put the race intake on there. Our ignition timing is already pretty much maxed out. Actually, it is maxed out. But let's see if we can raise this RPM limit now. And... Um, 274, that would probably be shooting for the moon, so I think that should be okay. And uh, since this is a full on shop, I believe they could make equal length headers, so we'll put those on there as well. We're going to leave the cat on there because we want to be legal, right? No, but we're going to be. Uh, looks like we have knock issues. 95.7, yeah, I would say so. I would say so. Also seems that we are still having a bottom end issue. Okay, so let's richen it up because we have some room to play with there. And let's go with even more aggressive cam profile. Let's see what that brings us down to. 94.5. Um, so we still have quite a ways to go. And uh, yeah, we are definitely having bottom end issues. So I need to increase our quality here a little, I think. Because I don't think it's unrealistic to think we could raise that RPM limit. We really need to, to get the power out of this thing. Alright guys, I think you're going to be pretty blown away about what this engine is about to do for us. If I got my parts correct. We're climbing. We're climbing. We're still climbing. 295 horsepower. 243 foot-pounds of torque. Obviously, we're still kind of lacking in the bottom end. Oh, unfortunately, we're still having bottom end uh, reliability issues. So, down the RPM limit it goes, which is a shame. Oh, wow. See, because we did these new internals, it has actually made this engine a little bit long-stroked, which is meaning that the, the velocity of these pistons is extremely high. So, I assume, if we go to the test mode... No, it is actually the connecting rods that are having issues. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, sorry. 
That's what I was indeed thinking that the pistons, or sorry, the connection rods are trying to hold back those pistons that are going super fast, so they're like, we can't do it. We can't do it, man. So would the I beam ones do it? Um here. Yes. So that is the problem indeed. So now we can increase that RPM limit. There we go. Now we've got it up to 297 horsepower. Uh, I assume our economy has tanked. Eh, not terribly, but it, it has gone down. Uh, we are now outflowing this exhaust, though. So let's see if this thing will produce 300 horsepower. The chart looks good. The chart looks very good. Three oh seven, three hundred and seven 307 horsepower, 244 foot-pounds of torque. So, yeah, there was definitely a lot of hidden potential in this engine. Granted, this is not the stuff you would do in your own garage, and this would set you back probably quite a bit of money to have done. But, um, you could do it, and you could bring this car into a whole new category of performance. Okay, so let's work on trimming this thing out. Unfortunately, we cannot change the uh, the rear end gear ratio, if you will, but we can change the top speed, which does the same thing. So we're gonna put a longer gearing ratio in there in the back to try and get its potential top speed up, because I feel like uh, we may be losing out on some of that top speed without doing that. Gonna leave the tires pretty much and wheels pretty much as is. Unfortunately, with automation, this is one thing I wish could change. I don't know if it's possible, but I would love to see it where you could adjust at least the fender flares after you put fixtures on it. Because once you put fixtures on a car, body modding is over. You can't do anything, uh, and it's very easy to forget that you can uh, put the fender flares out and get more tire under there. So we're stuck with that. But that's okay. It is still the late 90s, and putting super wide tires on cars was not that common just yet. Tire technology hadn't gotten to where it is today. Alrighty, so braking. I would like to put more aggressive pads on it. 68. And we're going to increase the rotor size as well. Front and rear. And the calipers, I think, are okay for as light as this car is. Aero wise, we still have lots of cooling airflow to our uh, disposal. And we're going to keep some of that to keep this thing nice and cool and reliable. But I am now going to reroute some of that air into the brakes. Since we have so much extra, this is something that only a very skilled uh, mechanic or tuning shop would be doing and it's not something you would want on your everyday driver. Uh, downforce wise I'm gonna leave that as is as well we're not running this thing through the wind tunnel just yet. But interior wise we are now going to strip this thing of some insulation to save weight and we're gonna pull out the radio and all of that garbage because we want to go fast. And suspension wise we are going to go down even a little bit further I didn't see this thing bottoming out just yet so we're gonna go keep going down with it so increase our camber and our spring stiffness uh, sway bar stiffness let me tune that as needed our baseline for the shop tuned okay and also if you have an idea for a name for a shop that tunes Vector's cars, uh, suggest it and I will use it because I don't have any in mind. So you could name the shop that tunes Vector's cars. Uh, but now we have jumped up to 40 sportiness. We have demolished its economy. All right, we finally increased its acceleration, not by a whole lot, but it did drop down to 5.5, which is very respectable. Quarter mile is improving dramatically, 13.38. Now we're really going fast. Top speed's up to 166, uh, limited by arrow. We are now making downforce in the rear still. 
uh, even more downforce, and I believe we are decreasing that lift in the front. Okie doke, out of curiosity, I want to increase this front arrow inclination. We'll put a bigger front lip on it, and uh, we'll see if that gives us some improved handling. Well, it increased sportiness and tameness, that's a good sign. Downforce in the front, still not making downforce. It needs a lot of downforce in the front to uh, to overcome the lift. And overall, it did not help anything but the braking, which I guess isn't bad. Oh, that's one thing I forgot to look at is the original braking increase, but I assume that did indeed give us quite a, a boost in performance. And I think when we run on the airfield track, we will know for sure. All right, let's take a look. Yes, we are down to 128. So we shaved almost two seconds off of our time. And that is just with a car that is still very much so streetable and uh, just a little bit of money dropped into the, the shop that is yet to be named and needs to be named by you. <laughs> Alrighty, so those two are great and all and I enjoy making them. They're important in this era of car because, like I said earlier, tuning had started to become a real kind of important thing amongst the uh, amongst the automotive community in this in this time period so it's cool to see that this car has a lot of tuning capabilities in it but I want to see what this thing could potentially do if a racing shop got a hold of it and they went just full-on willy-nilly we're not gonna build this to any class rules or anything like that we just want to see uh, how fast we can make it. So we're gonna say it's a time attack car way before time attack really started being a thing. As far as the engine goes, I'm actually pretty impressed with its performance already. Uh, there was some things we could do such as putting that race intake on there finally. We can go up to ultimate unleaded which means we will have even more compression available. And let's see if that's good. Not too much. That's too much. The price is right. Uh, 11.5 maybe. 93.7, so we have a little bit more left. But we also have cam profile left. Let's go up to the beginning of the race category there. So yeah, maybe the 12 would work. 95.1, it says no. You cannot have such compression, sir. And, okay, that is good. Now we're already up to 326 horsepower, 250 foot-pounds of torque. It is getting chopped off, though. So let's go full craziness. Would Lightweight Forge to have more? Yes, that has a higher RPM. I think we're going to need it. I think we're going to need it. Because I want to go up to about 7,500. All right, 341 horsepower, 250 foot-pounds of torque, and we still have some potential left in it, I believe. Let's see if this thing holds together. I went all the way up to like 7,800 RPM. I don't know if it's going to hold together or not, but it should make some pretty staggering numbers. Or maybe not, because its peak power was right at that 7,500 RPM limit we had before. But that's okay, 350, th th words. 341 horsepower is still pretty darn impressive, and I think we can do some pretty awesome things with that. Now, Ty had suggested that uh, we put a centrifugal supercharger on this engine, because that was pretty common. Uh, we don't have those, and I don't feel it's fair to this engine to to throw the 80s turbo that we have to offer at it and I don't think that's kind of the car I want to build it's not to me the appeal of it is the super high horsepower NA straight six uh, now in the exhaust department we obviously need to go larger now and goodbye catalytic converter goodbye muffler we're going racing Three 
355 horsepower, 256 foot-pounds of torque. Very, very nice numbers there. I am very pleased. There we go. Save this one as well. I wonder how many engines and stuff I have in my save folder by now. Probably a lot. Okay, let's go ahead and go to the trim. And top speed of 210 is still way more than this car has in it, probably. Uh, I think we need to do this to see. Yeah, it's estimating, estimating 183. So I think that should be fine. Semi slicks is what we're going with now. Uh, bigger brakes, I don't know if they are really necessary. 350 is the max we can get in there. I think that's pretty much okay. I didn't see this car struggling with brakes at all. Cooling, we will tune this to be max power, uh, so or max speed, so we'll put it pretty much matched. And we're going to clad the underside of the car to try and get some speed out of it. Uh, what is the lightest? Is basic lighter than super light? It is, so we're going with that. No insulation now. Uh, power steering ABS, that's fine. And safety, we'll keep it as is. Oh, we'll take the back seats out. <laughs> no more back seats for you. And I'm going to go ahead and select race style suspension, which brings us all the way down. I am going to increase the camera a little bit beyond what it's saying, though. So if we run this, and we'll say fantasy race, because it's not built any class specifications. Sportiness has gone up from 40 to 49. Everything else went down. That sounds like a race car to me. So let's see. Oh, I already ran that. Let's see what it ran, runs on the track. The uh, top speed was 174. Braking is at 32.8. That's pretty much what it's been. We are now under the 13 second barrier at 12.9. 0 to 60 down to a 5.2. We are now pulling 1.32G. So pretty good improvements there. Uh, weight balance is still really good. I want to take a look at the R rate because it's something I've kind of been neglecting with this car. All right, let's stop you. Uh, we're now down to a 125.7. Uh, yaw chart. Oh, it was very good. So it's been okay that we've not been uh, paying much attention to it. I had a feeling it was pretty good. But uh, yeah, there is confirmation that it does look pretty sporty and is very tame. So 125.73. Let us bring up the power lap times. And here we go. 125.73 puts us in Lamborghini Gallardo, Audi RS4, Lotus Evora, and Ford GT40 territory. I think that is pretty good territory to be in. Now those are all factory cars, so uh, you can't just say that our car is that level of performance, but it's nice to know that it has it in it. Alrighty, I think that is going to do it this time. Thank you all for joining. I am not sure where the next episode takes us. If you guys think it's time to move on to a new car, let me know. That's probably the direction I'm going to go with this. Uh, I think we'll probably advance two years to the year 2000. Uh, Conan O'Brien fans will get a kick out of that. And that is where we will pick up next time. Wait, polymer, bamma, easy for me to say.